We had just started talking about the Fokker-Planck equation associated with the stochastic differential equation. So let us do this systematically and let us proceed as follows. So first we have an equation which is like the Langevin equation, kind of generalization of it and let us continue to call it the Langevin equation for a random variable xi which is a first order differential equation of the form xi dot equal to some function of xi. Let us look at stationary or non-stationary processes but no explicit time dependence here. We could include it if necessary but let us look at the case without it because all the cases we are going to look at will be without it okay. plus a term g of xi times a, a white noise, a Gaussian white noise which has got 0 mean and a delta function correlation. Hmm? So xi of t equal to 0, uh, zeta of t, zeta of t, zeta of t prime equal to delta function of t minus t prime okay. with unit strength and any strength in the noise is uh, subsumed in this quantity g of xi which could be a constant for instance. Okay. Now technically this noise is a Markov process assumed to be a Markov process. It is Gaussian in the sense that all its probability distributions, joint distributions and so on are all Gaussian functions and it is a stationary noise as you can see here at the level of the autocorrelation and it is a delta correlated noise so that the power spectrum is flat in this case. Then this implies and in turn is implied by an equation for the conditional probability density of this uh, variable xi. So for this quantity p of xi t xi naught 0 for this quantity here which is also guaranteed to be a Markov process in the sense that this uh, 2 point uh, this conditional density determines all joint densities. This quantity p satisfies an equation called the Fokker-Planck equation and the equation reads as follows. So this is the stochastic differential equation for which I will use the abbreviation SDE and that implies for this p a Fokker-Planck equation. or FPE for short for this quantity which is as follows delta P over delta T equal to on this side a term which is minus delta over delta xi F of xi times P itself that is the deterministic part, the drift part without this you have an ordinary differential equation it is deterministic plus a term called the diffusion term which is one half g squared times p. g squared is the square of this function that is the Fokker-Planck equation for this quantity. Of course it is got to be in this case since the initial conditions are at xi naught at t equal to 0 the value is xi naught the initial condition on this is simply a delta function this p at t equal to 0 is delta of xi minus xi naught so p of xi 0 equal to delta of xi minus zero. so very often i'm going to suppress this initial condition just call it p of xi comma t and p of xi comma 0 is some prescribed initial condition and this is what you have to solve this equation with. Hmm? We are not going to derive this, it is not very hard to derive, it is actually quite straightforward. I have to introduce 
moments of something called a transition rate or a probability per unit time and then uh, using that make an expansion etc etc and show that this is what is obtained in the case where this is a Gaussian white noise. So you take a discrete, you discretize it first. Pardon me? You discretize time? I do not discretize, I do not have to discretize time but it is convenient to do so when you are deriving the equation. If I am going to start from what is called the chain equation for Markov processes, go to what is called a master equation and then a Kramers Moyal expansion and so on and finally you show that for Gaussian white noise it reduces to this equation okay. and there is also the question of the interpretation of this equation because this, this noise here multiply this deterministic term multiplies this noise here. So this is called multiplicative noise whose amplitude depends on the value of the variable at that instant of time through this function here and for multiplicative noise you have different ways of interpreting this equation and we are using what is called the Ito interpretation. There is a Stratonovich interpretation, there are several other ways of interpreting this equation which gets us into stochastic calculus which I do not want to do here. So we will take this equation for granted because we are going to actually look at it in the simplest of instances, in the simplest cases and our focus is on very physical processes like the motion of a Brownian particle or three dimensional motion in a potential etc. etc. Okay. So this uh, equation is not very simple to start with because it is a second order equation in uh, the random variable in the variable xi and it is a first order equation in time. So it is a complicated partial differential equation. The solution is also fairly complicated. Now the cases we have already looked at fall squarely in this. You can see what is going to happen immediately. For instance, we considered the velocity process we said one Cartesian component of the velocity of a Brownian particle was satisfied in equation minus gamma v plus uh, square root of gamma over m times zeta of t. I called square root of gamma zeta of t is what I had called eta of t earlier the noise because I said the correlation function is gamma times the delta function. I want now a unit strength delta function here for the for the two point correlation. So therefore I could put the gamma outside in this form. So in this problem xi is v, f of xi is a linear function it is minus gamma v and g of xi is a constant and that is called additive noise because it just says to the deterministic part you are adding noise whose strength is independent of the value of the variable of the random variable this thing is a pure constant. Now look at what is going to happen immediately here. This will imply as we have seen if you apply the general theorem out here this implies that delta p over delta t equal to gamma times delta over delta v, v times p because a minus f of xi which is minus gamma v is minus sign cancels plus one half and then a g squared which comes out as a constant so it is just gamma over 2, 2 m squared d 2 p over d v. So without proof using this general correspondence I am asserting that given this Langevin equation this is the equation satisfied by the conditional density of the velocity. Now of course we know from the Langevin equation we already proved the fluctuation dissipation theorem. We know that uh, gamma is 2 m gamma k Boltzmann t. We already know that for consistency saying that uh, the system remains in equilibrium thermal equilibrium when you take the full average over uh, all realizations of the noise and then over all initial velocities we know that you should get the Maxwellian distribution find the equilibrium distribution should remain Maxwellian. That happens only if this is equal to that and that is what we argued was the fluctuation dissipation theorem in this instance. I said the strength of the dissipation and the strength of the noise must be related to each other in this consistent fashion. But that follows from here too immediately. You can see that uh, if you ask what happens as t tends to infinity because what we are doing is starting with a p of v t v naught 
because I know this is a stationary process. So, I do not write the 0 there, it does not matter in this case. Oh, just a side remark, the fact that this equation has a noise which is a stationary random process does not guarantee that the driven process xi is stationary. It guarantees it is Markov, but it does not guarantee that it is either stationary or Gaussian because this could be all kinds of functions out here. What is guaranteed is that it remains Markov and in general we will have a finite correlation time, not 0 as the noise. So, what is carried over is a Markov property, neither the stationarity nor the Gaussianity is carried over to the driven process in general. But we know we have already computed the velocity correlation function in this case and we know it is e to the minus gamma t apart from k t over m and we know that it is a stationary random process. So, I do not bother to write the 0 there in that case. Whenever it is a stationary process, I would not write the initial time explicitly because you can always shift it out. Okay. Uh, this quantity here, we know that it should become as t tends to infinity, it should go to the equilibrium distribution, the Maxwellian distribution, right. So, this should tend to be equilibrium of v because it should forget the memory of the initial velocity and go to the final velocity and be an equilibrium distribution as t tends to infinity, it should be the stationary distribution. But we know what this is, we know this is m over 2 pi k Boltzmann t to the power of half, it is a single component we are talking about e to the minus m v squared over 2 k Boltzmann t. We know that is what it should become, right. On the other hand, if I examine the equation itself and ask what happens to this as t tends to infinity, if there is a stationary equilibrium distribution this must become 0 because it cannot depend on time and then as we have already seen before, this will imply that the equilibrium distribution will satisfy an ordinary differential equation, no time dependence there which will look like this. This will look like gamma, uh, it will look like d over dv of gamma over 2m squared dp equilibrium over dv that is this term here plus gamma v times p equilibrium is equal to 0 because this side is 0 now. Therefore, the bracket is a constant therefore, this implies that this fellow is equal to a constant independent of v. But we also want an equilibrium distribution which is normalizable. So, this means p equilibrium as v tends to infinity must go to 0. It must have finite moments mean velocity, mean square and so on which means that these fellows should also go to 0. All derivatives should also go to 0 as v tends to plus or minus infinity okay? which implies that the constant must be 0 because this thing is equal to a constant and we say that at v equal to infinity this constant is 0. So, it is since it is a constant it is 0 for all v, but then that is a first order equation and we know what the solution of it is, it is trivial. So, this thing here will imply that uh, p equilibrium is equal to is proportional to apart from constant of proportionality e to the power minus 2 m squared gamma, I mm, will multiply through by this guy, you should be careful with all the 2's and so on, yes, 2 m squared gamma over capital gamma, yes, v squared over 2 because I integrate v dv and that gives me a v squared over 2 and that is this fellow, okay. okay. So, cancelling out these two fellows you get this. So, this matches this thing here if and only if m over 2 k Boltzmann t equal to m squared gamma over gamma. So, you are back to this, you are back to this. So, that is one more way of saying that this must be the fluctuation dissipation theorem.
if and only if gamma equal to 2 m gamma 3 Boltzmann. So, it is just saying it in, in, in the in terms of the probability distribution or then probability density function rather than the stochastic equation itself. It is the same fluctuation the dissipation theorem you are going to get. Okay. Now, what is the general solution of it? Well, now we need to examine this a little more carefully. This equation is not too hard to solve. It is not trivial though because this differential operator is not self adjoint. There is this first order term here. It is a bit of a mess. There are several ways of solving this. It turns out that the solution is precisely the Ornstein Ullenbeck distribution. This turns out to continue to be a Gaussian process in this case and it is the Ornstein Ullenbeck distribution. Okay. So, we know what that is. We know that uh, P of V P V naught equal to an exponential apart from normalization minus M V minus V naught e to the minus gamma T whole squared. That is the mean value, the peak shifts to the left divided by 2 m 2 k t and then the variance and then a normalization factor. Normalization which is essentially m over 2 pi k t times this times the square root of that whole thing. Okay. So, the mean is this value which goes to 0 as t tends to infinity starting at v naught and the variance is a delta function at t equal to 0, variance vanishes at t equal to 0 and then broadens out till it hits the value given by the Maxwellian distribution, okay. depends on the temperature and this is the OU. Ornstein Olin back distribution. Okay. Next question What about the phase space distribution? What about the distribution of x, v, and t? You need to know this is a joint distribution. Is it possible to get an answer for that? And the answer is yes. We can see how that is going to come about because I should really augment the, this equation with another equation which says x dot equal to v. We are talking about one Cartesian component. So, it is just an x and a v. So, x dot is v and v dot is this out here. In this case, there is no external force and therefore, there is no f of x which you might get from a potential maybe, but you do have this systematic part and then you have the random force here. Okay. So, one should be able to join uh, to write down a distribution of p of x comma v comma t given x naught v naught and 0 and an equation for it a corresponding equation. For that you need a generalization of this to higher dimensions to more to two dimensions we will come to that in a minute. But before that let us settle this other question. We know there is a diffusion limit and in the diffusion regime we know that uh, the mean square displacement goes like 2 d t and we know that d is k t over m gamma. Can we get that from this? Does it follow from this thing at all? Does it follow from this equation for instance? And the answer is yes, it in, indeed does because what we need is an equation which says that the velocity is delta correlated because when you are in the, dis, uh, the diffusion regime the velocity correlation time is gamma inverse and now you are saying you are at t much much greater than gamma inverse. So, one way of implementing that is to say I take gamma to be so large that gamma inverse is negligible and then at all t practically you are in the diffusion regime. So, one could look at the high friction limit of this equation and ask whether that is going to work or not. Okay. There are several ways of implementing this, but let us do it that way and see what we get. So, the high friction limit of this uh, system is going to be okay. 
gamma tends to infinity, gamma high friction. High compared to what? Well, the statement is that gamma is so large that all times that you look at are such that T is much, much greater than gamma inverse. Okay. So I drop the inertia term, this came from M times V dot, mass times acceleration, I drop that term, I retain this term and look at it as a stochastic equation. So now my stochastic equation says X dot, that is V, is equal to root gamma over Uh, just uh, one second before I do that, there is one thing I want you to bear in mind which is since we need this, we have imposed this fluctuation dissipation theorem for consistency, we can rewrite this equation a little bit and it is going to be useful to do so. So let us do that. Pardon me? So that I can take the large gamma limit, yeah. But it is also going to be needed in another context, we will see in a minute. So this is really gamma delta over delta V, Vp plus for this I substitute 2m kt gamma. Hmm. And then the 2 cancels, the, so this is gamma k Boltzmann T over m d2p over delta. So the diffusion coefficient if you like in velocity space is gamma kT over m. In position space it is already what we know, it is kT over m gamma. But in velocity space it is turning out to be gamma kT over m. We will keep that aside for a moment. So let us look at the high friction limit of this. And that reads, so I drop the V dot term, this term and retain this and bring it to the left. So it says V equal to root gamma over M gamma zeta of T. So you are really saying, uh, sorry, V which is X dot. which is what it is in the diffusion regime because it says the velocity is uncorrelated for all practical purposes, it is a delta function correlation. But we can simplify this, right. So this is equal to square root of, I will put that inside, so 2 m gamma k Boltzmann T over m squared gamma squared zeta of T equal to the m cancels, one of them the gamma cancels twice kT over m gamma. But remember we had set d equal to k Boltzmann t over m gamma. We discovered that the mean square displacement in the diffusion limit was actually 2 dt where capital D was given to be kT over m gamma. That is what we found. So let us put that in. Uh, this says this is square root of 2 d zeta of t. And now I go back and appeal to this general Fokker-Planck uh, correspondence between the stochastic differential equation and the corresponding Fokker-Planck equation. I stare at this and I say look, x is xi now, xi is x now, there is no f of xi uh, of zeta uh, or xi that term is missing, there is only a noise term. And g is square root of 2d, it is a constant. So this tells us that delta over delta t, p of x comma t for some given x naught which I will impose as an initial condition, right, is equal to 1 half g squared, but g squared is 2d and half of that gives me d, so this becomes d, d2p over dx2. That is the diffusion equation. 
that is precisely the diffusion equation. Okay. So, you see the origin of the diffusion equation from this language from this point of view it is precisely the fact that you are working in a regime where the velocity correlation time is essentially 0 and therefore, the velocity is a white noise and when you integrate it you get an equation for I mean you take this equation and write it uh, for as a density in x position you have this diffusion equation. So, this emerges from that correspondence it is part of that correspondence there is no drift term in this equation. It would be there if I had put an external force if I said I am looking at diffusion in a potential even gravity there would be an extra term there would be that first uh, the f of xi term would be present, but that is completely missing here. In the velocity case there was a friction term which was proportional to the velocity it was linear in the velocity that made life a little easy out here. In the diffusion case that is even that is missing. Now, if I look at sedimentation namely diffusion of uh, a molecule in a vertical column under gravity for instance, then there would be a constant force and a constant force would lead to just p there would be no v here just p on this side. So, you would have a first order term plus a second order term on this side and that would lead to an extra contribution it would change the solution here considerably it would lead for instance if you asked in a finite column if you asked uh, or even an infinite semi infinite column under gravity if you asked is there a steady distribution the answer is yes that would be one. But is there a steady distribution for this on the infinite line is there an equilibrium distribution for this if there were then this should be 0 and then you get d 2 p equilibrium over d x 2 equal to 0 and the solution to that is p equilibrium is a x plus b, but that is not normalizable it is not normalizable and therefore, there is no such equation there is no such distribution and you know that in this case what happens is that if you start at uh, delta function at x naught. So, you could impose a condition p of x 0 equal to delta of x minus x naught if you start at this delta function distribution and you look at this p as t changes it does this etcetera whatever it it does not even drift it does not drift because there is no drift at all what it does is to start at x naught it broadens out and broadens further and decays to 0 such that the total area under the curve remains 1 it is normalized you know no material is going away. So, this thing does not have an equilibrium distribution. If you put gravity we will do that later on we will do the sedimentation problem later on you will discover it tends to, to the bottom everything goes to the bottom. So, there is an equilibrium distribution under certain cases, but in general there is not one for this. So, this is how you get the diffusion equation, okay. but now you could ask what about the phase space distribution what does that look like. So, now we have to be a little more careful our uh, stochastic equation is a pair of equations. So, we have x dot plus v equal to 0 x sorry minus v equal to 0 and you have v dot plus gamma v equal to whatever this fellow was. Mm. Yeah, root gamma over m. Let's let's uh, change this thing here. This is equal to root gamma over m equal to root two m gamma k Boltzmann t over m square. Okay. So two gamma k t over m. Let's just put it that way. this fellow here times uh, zeta of t. So, it is a pair of coupled equations. Now, let me introduce a vector x which is x v put that as a matrix column matrix here 
I am going to write this as a single equation in a vector form and let us introduce a matrix K, a drift matrix which is equal to the minus 1 here, so it is 0, minus 1, the plus gamma here, so it is 0, gamma. Let us introduce that matrix. Then the left hand side for these two together becomes x dot plus k x gives you the left hand side equal to on the right hand side a noise which is essentially this fellow here 0 root 2 gamma k t over m times zeta. I can give it a symbol some vector noise it does not matter whatever it is okay. Now the question is what is the corresponding Fokker Planck equation corresponding to this and it turns out that what you have is a special case of a much more general case. In a case where the noise is additive, this is an additive noise, because there is no x or v dependence here, there is no g, there is only constants. Moreover, the drift is linear. So this is a linear drift. So you have additive noise and linear drift. This makes life easier. The general case is also something we are going to write down, but the expression for the Fokker Planck equation for the linear case with linear drift and additive noise is very straightforward and it is very natural. Let me write it down. It says, so now we are going to look at the density rho of x v t given x naught v naught etc. So let us put x naught v naught 0. Oh by the way when we looked at the high friction limit of the original Langevin equation and got to the diffusion equation for the positional probability distribution function uh, was x of t a stationary process or not? So we had this quantity P of x t delta over delta t equal to d, d2 P of x comma t over dx2 with initial condition x0 etc. So we had uh, P of x0 equal to delta function of x minus x0 and we know how to solve this equation. You do Fourier transform with respect to space, Laplace with respect to time etc many ways of solving this. There is a fundamental Gaussian solution with natural boundary conditions namely p is 0 as x tends to plus minus infinity. Then the solution of this equation is worth remembering it is a fundamental property. It is equal to 1 over square root of 4 pi dt e to the power minus x minus x naught whole square over 4 dt. that is the fundamental Gaussian solution to the diffusion equation. The peak remains at x naught out here and the peak actually goes to the, the width of this peak goes to infinity linearly with time that is why you have diffusion. So in this case the average value of x minus x naught squared it actually diverges. Well, the probability density itself decreases at all points. There is a 1 over root t. It is normalized to unity. The integral from minus infinity to infinity in x for all time is finite, is 1. Okay. Is this a stationary process? No, eminently no, because the variance changes with time. So it is not stationary. It is Gaussian. It is Markov, but non stationary. Earlier the velocity process alone, the noise is Gaussian, stationary, Markov and delta correlated. The velocity process is stationary, Gaussian, Markov but not delta correlated, exponentially correlated. The position in the friction limit is not stationary, 
it continues to be Gaussian Markov. Yeah, exactly. So, this is not, yes, I emphasize once again, this is not the exact equation for the positional density at all. How would you get that? Well, that would get, you would get from here, you would get from this quantity. So, if you did this, if you integrated minus infinity to infinity dv rho of x v t, if you read this with those initial conditions of course, x naught, v naught is 0. So, you integrate over the other variable velocity, you would then get a distribution in x, the conditional density for x, the exact conditional density for x. That is not this, because as he points out, this is true only in the region where gamma t much, much greater than 1. Only there is this true. You really have to go back here and do this. Similarly, if you got the exact answer here and you did this minus infinity to infinity dx rho of x v t x naught v naught 0, you would expect to get, what would you expect to get here? You would expect to get this should be equal to p of v t v naught. You would expect to get this because you would get the conditional density in the velocity now and you do and you do in this case. The x naught dependence must somehow disappear and you should get this. But what happens and I am anticipating myself a bit, what happens if you did this, you integrate over the velocity is that you get an answer for p of x v t which involves both x naught and v naught which immediately tells you that it is not a stationary process. X alone is not a stationary process. Even worse, we know that this quantity satisfies a Fokker-Planck equation in the velocity variable alone. This quantity does not satisfy anything of that kind. It does not satisfy any simple master equation. So, that is the problem. This is the problem. It is a highly non-stationary process even in the diffusion limit. There is not. There is V naught dependence, of course, we saw that. There is V naught dependence, certainly there is V naught dependence. But the point is when you integrate here this quantity, there should be no V naught dependence. There should be X naught, yes, but there is V naught dependence as well. So, you cannot decouple the velocity completely, okay, showing that this is retaining the correlations, memory, etcetera. We will see, we will see what the solution looks like and then we will be able to examine this. So, yeah. so that is a good point that this quantity is equal to this only in the limit. So, this as gamma t much, much greater than 1 goes to this p of x t, this p of x t goes to that, yeah. but not for all t. Okay, so, the question is what is the Fokker-Planck equation here and the answer is the following. You have delta rho over delta t equal to in such a case, let me call momentarily, let us call this equal to x1, x2 in index notation, first component, second component. Then this is equal to delta over delta xi, I am sorry it is equal to k i j delta over delta x i x j rho, where a summation over repeated indices is implied. Plus a term which is the diffusion term, it will look like some generalized a diffusion matrix here d i j times d 2 rho over d x i delta x j. We already know this, 
we already know what this k i j is. It is this, I have to write down what is d i j, the diffusion matrix. Okay. Let me use another symbol for it, uh, let us use d i j. So, this d in this case is 0, 0, 0. That is not surprising because this is essentially root twice the diffusion constant in velocity space that is what this is. So that is the Fokker-Planck equation. in phase space all we have to do is to substitute for this k substitute for this d and we are done okay. so let's write it out so this becomes equal to uh, the first term that's going to contribute is k12 out here and that's going to have a minus sign delta over delta x1 that is x2 is 0 and then k22 is going to contribute so that is going to be plus gamma delta over delta v, v rho and that is it plus this fellow and the only term that contributes is d22. So plus gamma k Boltzmann t over m d2 rho over delta v. Pardon me. Well, x2 is v, x2 is v, and we are looking at only d22 because all the other terms are 0. But this is precisely we, what we got in the Fokker Planck equation for the velocity, and this too. But we have an extra term here. But you see, this term can be simplified a bit because x and v are independent variables in phase space. So this is equal to minus v delta rho over delta x plus gamma delta over delta v v rho plus gamma k Boltzmann t over m d2 rho over d v2. Okay. This is the phase space Fokker-Planck equation for the phase space conditional density rho. Remember this is an equation for rho of x, v, t given x0, v0 at t equal to 0. We essentially have delta of v minus v0, delta of x minus x0 and with those boundary con initial conditions you have to solve this equation here. Does this remind you of something? Well if you bring it to this side what is going to happen? Yeah it looks like a total derivative, this looks like the convective derivative, it is indeed that. It is indeed that it is just the convective derivative which is sitting here, no external force present, no velocity dependent force, no magnetic field, none of those things. Then this is looks like a convective derivative, it even has a right sign, you bring it to this side, it is convective, precisely the convective derivative, which is what you kind of expect physically. So can we write the three dimensional generalization of this, that will be a horrible thing, but anyway before we do that. I should tell you what the solution to this equation is. You can again solve it with delta function initial conditions, you can give an exact solution. It is a two dimensional Gaussian, it is a joint Gaussian in both x or x minus x naught and v minus v naught e to the minus gamma t, it is a joint Gaussian. So it will have an exponential which will involve minus x squared, minus v squared, it will also involve an xv term in between such that asymptotically, so the solution to this asymptotically the 
what would you expect it to do for t tending to infinity? Well, the solution will actually vanish because if you look at the ordinary diffusion equation, the probability density vanishes. But, but they are not asking us mathematically t becoming infinite, we are not saying that. We are saying when t becomes much larger than all the time scales in the problem, gamma t much, much greater than 1 for instance, what would happen? So let us write that, that is much more reasonable, right. What would you expect it to become? The velocity thermalizes. In other words, it loses side track of its uh, initial value and gets into the Maxwellian distribution. So you would certainly expect that to happen. The position in the diffusion limit will have a diffusion equation solution, Gaussian. So I expect that this is going to become e to the minus mv squared over 2 k Boltzmann t times e to the minus x minus x naught squared over 4 dt times the normalization factors. So this fellow is divided by root. 4 pi dt and this fellow is divided by m over 2 k Boltzmann t, 2 pi k Boltzmann t times square root. So I expect that to happen and it, it that is what that is that should be your check that in, indeed does so. Okay. But as I said if you integrate this exact expression over v alone you get a very complicated thing for x which will involve v0 and x0. But you integrate over x from minus infinity to infinity, you will get the Ornstein Nolenbeck distribution with initial value v0 with no reference to x0 for the velocity distribution alone. Okay. What would you expect uh, the would happen in this three dimensional case? So we could write a generalization of this, we could make these things vectors here in three dimensions. So what would happen to this quantity? Everything else remains the same but of course different Cartesian components of the noise would be uncorrelated to each other. You have to assume that. So you would certainly have to assume that you have a zeta i of t zeta j of t prime average value is equal to delta i j delta of t minus t prime have to assume that, that is certainly true and then what this quantity does rho of r v t given r naught v naught at 0, we can write down a Fokker Planck equation for this, for this rho, phase space density in three dimensions. We can read it off from here, just the vector form of it. So you would again get delta rho over delta t is equal to what would happen to the first term? Minus v dot grad rho grad with respect to r with respect to the components of the coordinate plus what is the next term going to be? So gamma times grad with respect to v dot v rho right plus gamma k Boltzmann t over m grad with respect to v squared this is the exact Fokker Planck equation for the phase space density in three dimensions just a straightforward extension of this quantity and the solution is a generalized Gaussian in all six variables with the same sort of properties once again. So once you have this correspondence between the stochastic differential equation and the Fokker-Planck equation, then the matter is writing down the Fokker-Planck equation is very straightforward here, okay. Now we have to go to the next stage where we look at cases where you have uh, multiplicative noise and then the question is what happens if you have a higher dimensional case? You should be able to write 
generalization there too and we will do that and we will apply it at least in the simplest instances we will apply it to a couple of examples so that you see what the use of this whole thing is. But this is a fairly intricate problem at the same time it is amenable to exact solution in this case. Okay, let me stop here, let me take it up.